Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Cabinet has approved the long-awaited update to the Integrated Resource Plan. Terence Creamer joins me now to discuss the approval and the Energy Minister's decision to approve the plan without further consultation. Welcome Terence. Hi oh, Sam. Has the RP been published and what does it contain? Well, we still have to wait for that. Um, what, we s what, what happened this week on Wednesday was that Cabinet had a marathon a session, 12 hours, and lots of things were approved during that um, uh, meeting, including what awaits the Eskom board announcement as well. Um, but one of the long-awaited, as you, as you suggested, uh, plans for South Africa is this integrated resource plan, which is out of date now s since 2011. Uh, the plan has sort of been out of date, and uh, there's been a plan to revise it. In the, at the end of last year, uh, the, the, the former, uh, well, by two, energy minister, Tino Jomat Pedersen, uh, released the document. Um, it was the integrated resource base case, and then that triggered a public comment period uh, and public hearings that were held in the first quarter of this year. And since then, there was supposed to be a process of revising the RP and updating it and getting it to a point where it can be uh, uh, approved. However, there was a lot of unhappiness with the base case, which many said was not a base case, but had already been policy adjusted for certain uh, elements of certain generation technologies, most notably nu nuclear. So there was a feeling that maybe this plan should have been reworked. But I think what we've seen now is that the plan uh, government has just uh, decided to move ahead with an integrated resource plan. And what they've, it seems, have done is adjust only for the, the decline in volume forecast. So the integrated resource plan looks at both the resources on the supply side and what technologies uh, South Africa could apply to those resources and uses the uh, cost um, for each of those technologies, uh, an assumption, and then it assumes an, a demand and matches the generation new build as well as the existing fleet to that demand. And because we've had such a lot a lower demand uh, post the financial crisis and then with all their own goals in South Africa in terms of its weak economic growth and policy uncertainty, we've seen a, a fall in, in demand. And there's also concern that, that with these tariffs continually rising, that that demand is not going to recover very strongly. And we've now got a surplus of power generation in the system. They've adjusted, it seems, the RP. So uh, to reflect that, but not to uh, not to change the mix at all, or to uh, change the proportions of the old 2010 RP. So the same proportion of nuclear, the same proportion of solar PV, the same proportion of coal uh, is is expected to be in the plan, just adjusted for the lower volume. So while there would have been 9.6 gigawatts, for instance, of nuclear introduced by 2030, that will be reduced now in line with the lower demand. But what that figure is, we'll have to wait for the actual publication. Um, so that's really where we're at. And uh, the, the decision is that that cabinet has, has now moved ahead with that plan. Uh, um, and I suppose with a mandate to keep the, the plan up more updated than has been the case in the past. The minister says there will be no more consultation on the plan, which he also stresses is not um, a policy. Yes, so he, w he went into quite a lot of detail at, a, at the Energy in Daba in a media briefing explaining that, it, that the resource plan is not government policy. Uh, what the policy is, he says he draws from the Act, and the Act says that we, have a, in a, we need to have an energy mix of different generation technologies. Um, so that would include coal, uh, which is the mainstay at the moment of the South African generation system, will be the re new renewable resources, it will be uh, um, additional nuclear to what we already got at Kuburg, and some, uh, some other te technology, including demand side management and energy efficiency, et cetera. Et cetera. So that is the, the mix and that is the policy. Um, what the plan does is it just sort of puts meat or some vision uh, around the generation technologies to that mix. And, uh, th th and then what will happen from there is we go into procurement phases where the actual financing and the bankability of these projects becomes more clear. So I think, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we're in a very suspicious uh, or uh, where there's a high level of mistrust in society. So when a government last tried to move ahead with a nuclear procurement, uh, RFP, uh, it was an RFI, not even an RFP, 
that went to the courts and the courts said that the process being followed by the, uh, by the department uh, was flawed um, and was unconstitutional and illegal and therefore they had to stop that process. So that nuclear procurement process uh, has been stalled. Um, so the, the issue now is once you've got a plan, the government or the minister would then base a whole lot of determinations, uh, section 20, 34 determination based on that to, to allow for further procurement processes. So it's going to be interesting now to see with this, this view that of cabinet and the minister that the plan RP has been fully consulted and there's no need for further consult consultation where the civil society and opposition parties agree uh, and or whether we might go back to the courts for determination as to whether this RP process has been uh, fully transparent and fully consulted. So I think um, it's, go it's, it's a wait and see game because first we have to wait for the RP to be published to see what the contents are and then we'll have to see what the response of civil society is to this RP. But I, I think uh, given the litigious nature of South Africa and the mistrust in society at the moment and the very real concerns that, um, that the nuclear program is going to be rushed, I think we should probably expect some form of legal uh, response. There is some news of movement on the renewables front. Yes, I think uh, uh, here the minister was able to make a happy announcement. He, he said he was very pleased with the fact that the two parties, uh, Eskom, well, government, uh, Eskom and uh, the RPPs, the three parties, had found each other. He, uh, that was the word he used. He didn't go into details around what the, the, the power purchase agreement pricing would look like. Now, these uh, projects were procured all the way back in uh, 2015. In the middle, by the middle of 2016, it became clear that Eskom was unwilling to actually sign. Uh, so they were procured by the DOE, but the, uh, the buyer uh, and the, the way that these projects actually get their remunerated is through Eskom as the single buyer. Eskom showed an unwillingness to buy, given that uh, there was a now a surplus of electricity uh, supply in the system. So we've had the stalemate over the last uh, year and a bit. Um, uh, so what the cabinet and the DOE have decided is that these projects, 27 of them, will now be procured. Now initially the former by one energy minister, I remember I spoke, the former by two, which was Tina Jamat pedersen then we had Minister Kubai, uh, she put in a line in the sand of 77 cents a kilowatt hour. Now for some projects that wasn't an, a major issue um, and they could meet that threshold, but for others uh, it was a big issue, and uh, especially for certain technologies which don't, that aren't solar PV or wind, so that would be a bid wind of 3.5, which is concentrated solar power. That, that was an issue, so there, was, there has been a, a toing and froing and a negotiation, and uh, they, now with this decision of the minister and the cabinet that these projects will be signed, uh, the next step is to sort of, sort of uh, get the contracts uh, signed. So apparently those are very, very close to being ready for signing and we should, we could hear in the course of next week uh, that uh, these projects have now reached financial close and that they have been signed and that we can now get into a, uh, a construction phase which the Minister says will um, see investment of 55 billion coming into the economy which is quite welcome at a time when very little else is happening in the South African economy to have a nice 55 billion fill up from the renewable energy projects and the jobs that that will stimulate. So there, there's something of mo uh, movement. But I think in, with, the, with the next step will be to have to look now at what happens to the future of the renewable energy program. It was held up by the president at the Energy in Daba as, as a, a world-class program. So uh, that's got a high level endorsement. But the issue is, you know, with the, the, the surplus of supply and with this um, RP now just following, you know, the percentages that were in the previous RP not being adjusted for costs, whether the, there will be as much renewables coming in through procurement or whether a lot of it might get crowded out through a nuclear build program. So there's a lot of uh, balls in the air at the moment. There's a lot of uncertainty. This energy in Daba was about trying to bring certainty and bring people together to try and stimulate what, uh, economic growth, development and job creation around the energy sector. 
uh, whether it will achieve that um, is very uncertain and whether we're going to land up in the courts again is probably more certain. Plus we've got the, um, the ANC conference coming up next week which could have a major impact on who the different people are that are presiding over some of these key departments including energy. So we'll have to, I suppose, w have to be in a watching brief and we'll have to wait and see how this all comes together. But there has been these two very, very important pieces of movement, one on the RP and secondly on the PPAs for the renewables. But uh, I think the RP, uh, there's a lot of water still to flow under that bridge and I'm, everyone's going to be watching that very closely. Thank you, Terence. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.